So good morning, everybody. Welcome for this new seminar. Today, we will have the talk by uh, Dr. Jose Carlos del Toro. He will talk about the art of astrophysical measurements and elementary lectures on photon counting and signal to noise. So Jose Carlos del Toro Iniesta was born in Cartagena in Spain in 1960, and he studied physics in the University of Granada, the first three courses, and then in La Laguna in Spain for major astrophysics. He's a CSIC research professor at the Instituto de Astrofísica Andalucía here at our house in Granada, and he's a specialist on solar magnetic fields. He got a PhD degree from the University of La Laguna and carry out a part of his career at the Instituto of the Astrophysica in Canaries, including a sabbatical year at the Lockheed Palo Alto Research Laboratory. Uh, from since uh, 98, he belongs to the staff of our house from IAA, and he has published some 180 papers on scientific journals and meeting proceedings has been editor of two books and author in 2003 of another one entitled Introduction of a Spectropolarimetry published by Cambridge University Press. He has taught advanced undergraduate courses at the University of La Laguna and postgraduate uh, post courses in Austria, Japan, Germany, and United Kingdom, United States, and Spain. He is co-investigator of the Stratospheric Balloon Sunrise Mission, is an associate investigation of the IAA instrument of the NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory mission. He's co-principal investigation investigator of SOFI, magnetograph of the European Space Agency's Solar Orbiter mission. He's principal investigation of the TUMAC magnetograph of and co-principal investigator of SISP spectropolarimetry of the Sunrise 3 mission. He has been director of our house from 2004 through 2007. He has been the Spanish national manager for the space research of the Spanish research agency from 2017 until 2019. So thank you very much, Jose Carlos, for this uh, seminar. And the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Brené. And thank you very much, you all, for attending this talk that uh, I consider more uh, a lecture than, than, a, than a regular talk. And this is because uh, a few months ago, I was invited to, to write a chapter uh, on solar magnetograph and tachographs for a book entitled uh, In Photons in Space for, for Springer. And when, when, I, when I wrote the, the, that chapter with my friend and colleague, uh, Valentin Martin Pillet, current director of the National American National Solar Observatory and the future, future director of the IC, <clears throat> I realized that the topic was of interest uh, of interest for, for, for you all because somehow uh, um, solar magnetograph or spectral parameters are a kind of an epitome of all kinds of astrophysical measurements. So in, a, in an attempt uh, to, to battle the, 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 usual, the usual belief that we measure uh, masses, velocities, magnetic fields, temperatures of heavenly bodies, I, I want to stress that this is not true, that we measure only photons. Uh, in an attempt to to, to dismantle the, the common belief that uh, we, solar physicists, physicists, have an excess of photons in our daily life, uh, I want to stress that this is not true. And I hope you will uh, finalize the, this talk mm, convinced that we are uh, as much photon starved as any observer looking at the confines of, of the universe. <clears throat> and uh, in an attempt to motivate you uh, to, to, to have a look, to, to have a, a grasp on the means you have available at your disposal when 
when looking at the sky, I prepared this talk that I hope you will enjoy. Oop. Now, why? Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> have you have you ever dared to 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 evaluate how many photons reach your detector when you are pointing the the telescope to this to the sky? Are you sure that all the effects, the spectrograph, if any, <clears throat> is uh, uh, adding to 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 those photons when you are analyzing them? Do typical rules of image formation apply when we carry out these image formation analysis with polarized light? Well, these are a few questions that are typical for researchers when trying to design instruments. Okay. <clears throat> these instruments are later and later constrained, not by physical, but by spurious. Uh, uh, constraints uh, that can can from can come from technology or even budgetary and administrative limitations. So, <clears throat> of course, I, I won't enter into details of those constraints and and focus on, on in physics. Okay. <clears throat> so, I said that spectrobarometry is an epitome of of all kinds of me measurements because we are doing uh, everything an astronomer can do with light. We are measuring the spectrum of the polarized light. Okay, here you, you are going to, to see in this, in this movie how uh, uh, we are carrying, uh, carrying out a 5D spectroscopy. And I like to, to say this because I like to brag in front of you and us night astronomers that are very proud of 3D astronomy. So the, this is 3D because you have two spatial dimensions and one wavelength dimension, but we are adding the fourth dimension with uh, polarization. Here uh, you can see how when we have cut this, uh, this cube at a given position uh, in space, we are recording the spectrum in four different ways corresponding to the four stokes parameters of light. If instead we cut the, this cube at a given wavelength, we can imagine the sun or any other object <clears throat> in all four stokes parameters. So this is an, a, a wealth of information which is at our disposal, at your disposal, but uh, uh, from time to time, we have to renounce to analyze the polarization <clears throat> or uh, uh, even the spectrum of, of light. <clears throat> uh, I said 5D spectroscopy, and these are only four dimensions. The fifth dimension is time, because typically we carry out measurements of all those four dimensions in a time series because heliosismology is our only means to probe the interior of the sun. So <clears throat> the, 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 the work uh, we carry out typically is kind of involved, but uh, let, let analyze step by step what we are doing. <clears throat> uh, certainly, we need tools for imaging. We need an imager, so we need a telescope or photon collectors and cameras, okay? As a, as, as a spectrometer, we can use a spatially scanning spectrograph, cutting the cube at different slices, spatial slices, okay? Or a filter graph, just tuning, tuning the, the hypercube at different wavelength positions, okay? Uh, we also need polarimeters, and eventually we need data processor like uh, on board our our instruments, uh, as is the case of our polarimetric and seismic imager aboard Solar Orbiter. All these pictures are a few a few examples of instruments and subsystems of instruments developed by our by our team, the Solar Physics Group of the uh, IAA which leads the so-called 
Spanish based Solar Physics Consortium, a consortium of five public institutions in Spain, which are working for more than 20 years, and uh, including besides IAA, INTA, the uh, uh, University of Valencia, the Instituto Ignacio de Arriba from the Technical University of Madrid, and the IAC. So these, these uh, interinstitutional team is working in producing uh, spectral polar images, well, as I say, for more than 20 years. So the, the basic goals when astronomers uh, 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 is going to observe are typically get the best spatial resolution, best spectral resolution, best parametric sensitivity at a minimum time. Okay. And then of course, you cannot do everything at the same time. And this, and this is already heralding the, why I call the art of astrophysical measurements, because compromises must be applied between these goals. Okay. But uh, we, we need to, to go to, uh, for, for, we look for spatial resolution because the, the critical scales or uh, solar phenomena take place at scales closer or even smaller than the mean free path of photos. We are speaking about tens of kilometers. Uh, the, uh, the important physical phenomena, uh, like radiative transfer, it, it includes like Doppler effect, Zeeman effect, Hamlet effect, scattering, and all other physical phenomena occurring at the star. <clears throat> leave their fingerprints in the spectrum and in the polarization state of light. And we have to hurry up and do measurements in, uh, uh, in shorter times because the sun is evolving at, at, many, uh, at many time scales and, because, uh, and because there are correlations between image quality and integrity uh, with time, because if we are taking too long for, for having a, a single data set, then <clears throat> the sun was one at the beginning and another one at the end, okay? So these are the basic goals that we typically have to trade off with. But the, 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 the business, the astronomical business, the astronomical measurement is counting photons, okay? We are just, simple mere photo counters. And let us digress a little bit on what's going on with those photos. Here you have a, a yes, the surface of that uh, zone of, of the sun imaged by a single pixel of my detector. Okay? So, seen from my detector, from the telescope, the, the surface is subtending this solid angle. Okay? It is emitting light in all directions, but only those rays within this cone of solid angle omega x reach the, the telescope and then the pixel. Okay? So, <clears throat> uh, uh, and these Surfaces, uh, these surfaces are inclined with respect to their respective normals by angles theta and theta prime. So what I want to, to, to know certainly is how much energy is emitted in the sun. And what I know is what I measure, the, the energy uh, uh, detected in my, by my pixel. So let us calculate both. And we have. This in here, so E is a, a, in a given in a given um, bandwidth, wavelength, wavelength bandwidth. This is the energy emitted by the sun, and this is the energy received by my base. Okay, I, I have to to integrate correspond uh, the, the corresponding things. Tx is the the exposure time of my single shot image. Okay, and here I lambda and I prime lambda are the typical specific intensities. That is, energies 
per <coughs> review or, or receipt, per unit solid angle, per unit normal area, per unit wavelength, and per, per unit time. Okay? If there is nothing between the emitter and the absorber, E and E prime should be the same, should be equal, must be equal. Okay? Then if I mm, carry out some uh, change of variable in the, in the intervals, I, I can subtract these two to get a zero. And this can only be zero if and only if I is equal to I prime. Because the other possibility is that either the theta or theta prime is 90 degree, but this has no physical meaning. So in the absence of sources and sinks between my emitter and my absorber, specific intensity, so energy per solid angle, per uh, normal uh, surface area, per wavelength and per time, per unit time, is the same. And this is great. This is great because it allows us to evaluate the energy emitted by the by the sun by using the <laughs> the specific intensity I measure. Okay, if I change energy by the product of number of photons and, and the energy of each of what of them, then I can calculate and get this expression, where you can really see that there are more photons in the red than the blue. So bad news if you want to go to the ultraviolet. This is simple photometry, okay? So independently of the, of the uh, 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 energy emitted by the source, if you are in the, uh, in, the, in the blue, you have more difficulties. D and D are the primary and, and secondary diamond excuse me, the diameters of the primary and secondary mirrors of the telescope, okay? And uh, omega pixel is just the, the pitch of, of, my, of my pixel, okay? Great. <clears throat> now, I have, I, I have to calculate the number of photons, but this, is, this has not take, uh, taken into account any effect introduced by the atmosphere, by my instrument, including the telescope, etc., and so on and so forth. And certainly, the size of the telescope aperture is not the only limiting factor. So uh, uh, the scene in ground-based observations or spacecraft data <laughs> introduced blurring in my, in my image. Aberrations of optical components can deteriorate the, the image quality and even the throughput. Straight light reduces contrast. Detectors can introduce spurious signals. So, uh, uh, in summary, a nodal uh, assessment is mandatory. And this assessment is provided by the point spread function of all the chain, all the, the system, system transmission <clears throat> between the emitter and the receiver. Okay, so uh, uh, we better deduce the point spread function, the uh, impulse response of our system in order to understand <laughs> our images. If P is this uh, response function, then the observed intensity as a function of space is the convolution of the original, the real uh, solar intensity and the uh, uh, normalized points of function. That is simply the, the monochromatic uh, throughput. Okay? So, but if I want to, to, to get the fraction limit, because I'm interested in the best spatial resolution, then this determines directly the size of my pixel. My pixel should be a fraction of lambda over D according to Brady criterion, okay? So that <clears throat> the former formula can be written as in here. And this is very interesting. So the, the dependence on, on, on lambda is even stronger. So UV is, is uh, very, 
is very difficult. Uh, UV is very difficult and infrared is, is better. But th there is a significant uh, 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 curiosity in here because imagine you have an, an off-axis telescope. So that the secondary does not make any shadow on the, on the primary. In such a case, this is zero. And then the number of photons is independent of the size of your telescope, okay? And this is why we are photo starved, because <clears throat> although we, we use, we use uh, also a, 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 on axis telescopes, this decreases uh, uh, very, very, the effect of the diameter is very, very small. And, and this, is, this is natural and easy to understand because a larger telescope it increases the, numbers, the number of photons, but also decreases the size of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the area you are imaging on, on its pixel. Okay, so that we in solar physics <laughs> uh, measure the same photons uh, of a barely uh, uh, resolved star with the same uh, physical physical parameters, with the same temperature, pressure, etc. Okay, so this is uh, one of the things that I wanted for you to realize. Then, if we measure photons, we have to 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 do it well. How we do well photon count and good photon counting? Just by taking care that the noise is more. As simple as that. But noise is cumbersome. <laughs> noise uh, has a term which is independent of the signal. Uh, here, uh, it has a quadratic term which is dependent on the a dark current signal, and here a term, a quadratic term in uh, a regular signal. The, the, the signal we want to, to, to keep, okay? And to keep higher than the noise, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is real noise, this is off, uh, offset fixed pattern noise, which has to do with the uh, 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 um, gain of columnar amplifications of, of the detector. This, this is quantization noise. But these are typically, in solar observations, these are small. OK? So the, the point is in here. Well, that, that those things related to dark current are, in principle, easy to correct, because you can take independent uh, measurements with uh, uh, by, by obscuring your, your camera, and then you can take this out of your signal. But the point is that you have quadratic terms in the signal that must be avoided. So if we want to go to a photon noise regime where the noise is of the order of, the, the square of, of the noise is of the order of the signal, or the no, noise is the square root or the signal, <clears throat> then we have to, to, to be very careful and then feel the photon, the, the photon well of our pixel uh, enough as for having this very small compared to my signal, but mm, to have it empty enough as for those quadratic effects to be negligible. Okay. And this is also part of an art because there are no golden rules for uh, that say, hey, guy, you reach one third of, of your uh, photon well, and then that's all. No, you have to carefully adjust your, <clears throat> your instrument in order to have the, 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 the well filled enough and empty enough as well. So in the end, in the end, if we, if we are successful and then our signal to noise is uh, proportional to the ratio of the number of photons. I have introduced in here the quantum efficiency of, of my detector, which, I, which was not taken into account in my former formula. 
And I, I'm using the, uh, the lowercase letters uh, for a reason that you will understand later. Okay, so <clears throat> my goal should be to reach the photon noise regime and inside the regime, my signal to noise ratio is of this sort. <clears throat> then let's go for spectroscopy. So spectrographs, in order, in order to, to cover that for the cube, okay, spectrographs have to scan across the space, okay? I have to put my slit uh, uh, step by step in different positions or, or, over, over the sun and then reconstruct the spectrum in the, in the other direction. Filter graphs instead tune between different wavelengths. We are cutting the, the cube at different wavelengths and imaging at each wavelength. <clears throat> uh, but both are, uh, are based in interference. Interference have orders, and then both need a brief, uh, uh, an order sorting pre-filter. So the normalized response, re spectral response of my system, G is the product of the pre-filter transmission and the pre-filter of the, uh, and the filter graph transmission or the spectral PSF of my spectrum. Uh, with such <clears throat> uh, a nomenclature, then if I would only be doing spectroscopy, I would take the original uh, intensity, convolve with the spectral response and get the observation. But if I want to do imaging spectroscopy, then <clears throat> I have to also convolve with my spatial PSF, okay? <clears throat> now for imagery. For imagery is as common to electromagnetic radiation as intensity or, or um, spectral uh, dependence on weather, okay? <clears throat> but now life uh, gets more complicated because we have to measure four quantities. The all four Stokes parameters that here are represented by a column vector T is transpose. Okay. A, a, I is the intensity, Q, the, the difference in intensity between linearly polarized light at zero and at 90 degree. U is difference between linearly polarized light at 45 and 135 degree. And V is the difference in intensity of circular right-handed and left-handed circular polarizations. These four quantities are bounded by the Chandrasekhar's relation, which is just the, the, the Minkowski's uh, metric of special relativity. <clears throat> uh, so the intensity is always larger than polarization. Okay, uh, uh, when these two members are, are the same, we say that the that light is completely polarized. In some other cases, it's partially polarized. And when all Q, U, and V are zero, then we say that the light is natural or completely unpolarized, okay? I said our lives more complicated because now, since we have to measure four quantities, we, we, we need at least four measurements, okay? We, we need to, to create, to form four linear, at least four linear combinations of I, Q, U, and V. The shape of, of the coefficients in front, uh, some of you have uh, already guessed reminiscent of being the uh, elements of the first column of the mm, polarimeter Mullen matrix. But this is another, another stuff that uh, we, we cannot enter today. Okay, so our measurements for polarization are not measurements of intensity alone. 
are linear combinations of all four source parameters. Okay, so uh, polarimetry is, uh, is differential photometry. U is difference between zero and ninety. Uh, uh, U is difference between forty five and hundred thirty five. V is difference between right hundred and left hundred. Okay, and differential photometry is much more riskier than regular photometry because uh, imagine any spurious effects, any variation of the sun between uh, uh, the first measurement and the, the second measurement, then introduces spurious signals that are damaging my result. So I have another difficulty <clears throat> when doing parametry. But, uh, and, and, and also I wanted to, to, to remark that the, the uh, conservation of energy of uh, the, the invariance of specific intensity we saw in the first considerations <clears throat> on photon counting are indeed a, a special case of a more general one. When you are considering the transfer of polarized radiation, which is much more general than the, the formal analysis, then you, <clears throat> you, you have the distributed transfer equation J is the emission, K is the propagation matrix, okay? Then when <clears throat> the propagation matrix and the emission are zero, which is when in the absence of sources, sinks by refringent dispersive media between the emitter and the absorber, then this is zero, so that the full stone vector is conserved. So not only energy is preserved, but also angular momentum. The, Q, the, the, uh, the, the conservation of Q, U, and V uh, speak about the angular momentum of the photons. So just for, for, for the uh, non-experts to have a grasp on, on, on what we are talking about here, I show you the, the, the spectrum of these two lines, which are one angstrom apart, one angstrom <clears throat> apart. <clears throat> this is Stokes I, Q, U, and V. Certainly the differences are giving us physics from the sun. But what I wanted to, to remark is that, as you can see, it's much more difficult to measure U and U than I and or B, because noise, the dash lines, noise H is higher. And this is pure consequence of, on, uh, of the, the way we measure polarization. Okay? So <clears throat> the, the smaller this noise, the better, because we could detect much more real signals. Okay? So my battle in doing photometry, the same as for doing uh, uh, photometry or spectroscopy, I have to reduce signal to noise, uh, increase the signal to noise ratio, I have to reduce noise, okay? <clears throat> Without entering into details, <clears throat> we have realized that uh, the smaller Q over I, U over I, and V over I, the more precise my parameter will be, okay? So <clears throat> the, the, the precision, the polarization precision is kind of an inverse of the signal to noise ratio. If for each of the four Stokes parameters, zero, one, two, and three, for I, Q, U, and V, <clears throat> I define the signal to noise ratio as in here. So at the, at the continuum wavelengths, I take Stokes I and divide over the variance of my signal, and this can be considered the, polariz the, the polarization precision, so the inverse of, of this quantity, okay? So the, the, <clears throat> this more, the piece, the better my, my parameter. It is, it is possible to demonstrate that uh, uh, there can be parameters that fulfill these, uh, these conditions for the so-called uh, uh, polarization efficiencies. Polarization efficiencies are directly related 
to uh, position. So the, the, the larger the epsilons, the more precise my parameter. And <clears throat> it is also easy to see that the uh, uh, signal to noise ratio uh, in Q, U, and V are smaller than in I because epsilon I is always smaller than epsilon two, as you can see from, from this relation. Okay, so it is much more difficult to, to measure Q, U, and V than simple stop sign. <clears throat> well, uh, for every, uh, it has not only that difficulty of measuring several several measurements, but uh, it has also a, a instrumental problems. Okay, for instance, uh, one can demonstrate that revolution symmetry in my in, in the optical path preserves preserve the uh, the polarization state of light. So do not introduce any spurious polarization to my to my measurements. However, this is only exactly true at the axis of of the of, of the path. Then <clears throat> uh, 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 there are contributions of my instruments uh, uh, which increase even when uh, for for which increase with the with the size of the uh, telescope out. So. If, what, if I want to, to get details, very, very small details in polarization, that property of revolution symmetry uh, cannot help. And I must calibrate independently of having a uh, uh, revolutionary symmetric telescope or not. Spectrographs introduce polarization. Spurious polarization have to, take, have to be taken into account. Filter graphs introduce polarization. Okay, so all this stuff uh, uh, would imply that a specific treatment of my uh, point spread functions and filter transmissions, as I used before, had to be treated uh, uh, treated differently for polarization. But as far as I know, nobody has ever made this, and we assume that all those possible effects, uh, we hope that they are negligible and forget them. So this is, in my opinion, a fertile uh, field of research right now, theoretical research. But, and then with that assumption, <clears throat> my observation for, for in a given wavelength <clears throat> is the convolution of my linear combination of stokes parameters convolved with the filter with the spectral response and the uh, point spread function. Here is a J index. Remember, we need at least four such equations. Okay? So I have a system of equations. We have to invert it in order to deduce I sun, Q sun, U sun, V sun. Certainly, no, no inversion is perfect, and and then some errors get in the in the form of so-called crosstalks uh, in our results. So some mixture of all four Stokes parameters appear, and we have to take care of those mixtures. Well, <clears throat> then when when uh, when I when I go to real instruments. Uh, I have to, 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 to make a, a decision. I have to trade off between the different goals because, uh, uh, for instance, I can, I can increase my spatial resolution, but then I get rid, rid of the photons. Or the same with spectroscopy. If I uh, uh, reduce my bandwidth, then I run out of photons. Or... <clears throat> If I take too much time, spatial or spectral integrity are, are forgotten. Not to say that the different spectral lines that we uh, uh, select speak of different physical phenomena of our object. 
So <clears throat> this is a cumbersome, a cumbersome decision, the, the, uh, system of decisions you have to, to carry out. So uh, typically image quality is made so that we approach the uh, diffraction limited condition, which is uh, obtained for a trail ratio larger than or equal to, greater than or equal to 0.8. Uh, you may need it, but you may not need it. But if you need it, then other, other constraints may destroy your design. And, and uh, just because you, you have to take into account some uh, electronics, framework, software, uh, thermal effects, etc. And then you result in, 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 in uh, in having an imperfect observations that are to be corrected for afterwards. So you better take care and determine the PSF and the, and the transmission profiles of, of your instrument. Optimizing the spectral resolution, as I said, cannot be uh, uh, minimized minimize the, the bandwidth because uh, you, you you, you need some photons to, to make your, your measurements. So a balance must be found, but a balance which is not defined, again, kind of an art is, is needed in this trade-off. But our business is of counting photons and you, we better go again to, to, to the formula, okay? So, we have, all these quantities, and we have to tune the values of of, of, of the uh, of our design in order to to get the best compromise among them. Uh, increasing the quantum efficiency of the detector has no drawbacks. So the the higher the best. So this is the only thing you can do without without thinking, but. <clears throat> uh, Lambda, lambda zero, uh, uh, so the number of photons increases with, with lambda zero or with lambda to the third uh, for diffraction limited instruments. So if we go to UV, we run out of photons and then our signal to noise uh, 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 goes down, our parametric precision goes down. So UV spectroperimetry is very, very challenging. <clears throat> uh, if we mm, make our system faster in, in, in the optical jargon, if we increase the solid angle seen by our pixels, okay, we certainly are able to capture more photons. This is good. And <clears throat> uh, even uh, systems with those with those big apertures. Uh, his acceptance angles can be uh, less sensitive to temperature. Uh, however, if it is too large, you lose spatial resolution, okay? Or you lose spectral resolution because the, the, the size of the slit in, in the spectrograph is, is also uh, governing the spectral resolution. So <clears throat> you have to take very much care on how to define, how to select the solid angle which sees your, your pixel. Diameter of the telescope. Well, increasing the aperture is always the best. It's always good. But remember, for diffraction limited uh, telescopes, the, the help is not very much. Uh, it is, is not uh, very high <clears throat> and maybe of little help. Here, lambda wavelength, if I increase my bandwidth, I get more photons. But the details in the spectrum that are telling me the physics of my object can be lost. So again, art. And last but not, not least, the time. TX, remember, was one single shot, okay? One single frame, 
shot, uh, in principle, the longer mm, TX, the better, because of buttons. But it should be short enough as for freezing the scene or the jitter of my of my instrument. Okay. Then if I if I cannot increase TX uh, uh, very much, then I have to be clever enough and take several shots with a small TX and add it on top of each other. Accumulate in a shot in order for my signal to noise to increase with the square root of the number of those individual shots, okay? But another constraint comes from the dynamics of the sun or the, the object. So I cannot spend a total time larger than the typical time scale of my of my object. If I if I'm observing a, a phenomenon in, in the sun that is taking place with typical scales of ten seconds, and I take two minutes, then <laughs> I forget any insight uh, from from that phenomenon. Then I have to take care of this. Uh, and, and and this total time is the effective time, which is the number of, of uh, the uh, single single shot time, num times the number of polarizations, times the number of accumulations, and times the number of wavelengths I'm taking, <clears throat> but I have to add an overhead, an overhead time because there is no uh, ideal instrument that doesn't take any 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 time in changing between uh, one measurement and the other, between one wavelength and the other, or my uh, 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 rastering rastering this this space. Okay, so in the end, I have to to define a duty cycle, uh, which should be introduced in this in this uh, relation. In, in instruments like IMAX or TUMAC, both in Spanish, <clears throat> uh, we carry out so-called dual beam parametry, and, and we can increase by a factor of square root of two the signal to noise ratio. So <clears throat> you have seen you have seen how trading off uh, is is a is a so, uh, uh, task uh, in a real art in uh, in uh, analyzing our measurements. So signal to noise is at the very heart of our measurements of any astrophysical measurement. You can uh, uh, increase this by and resign to this or or, or that or that or that other, but it has consequences on all the on all directions. Okay, so <clears throat> there is no mathematical rules for designing the best instrument. Okay, and we have to better uh, uh, design our instrument according to the to our scientific goal to uh, to the to the mm, uh, uh, physical phenomena mm, uh, uh, that we are going to study. Well. This is only for measuring photons, okay? Uh, I haven't said anything uh, of translating those photons to the real physics uh, we are looking for. So my final message, mistrust of any arrogant colleague that says I measure the uh, masses of this uh, black hole, uh, uh, or whatever, because this is not true. You guys as, <laughs> have measured have measured photons, and maybe you've done very well. But for measuring those photons, you have made many trade offs, compromises, and so on and so forth. And for the interpretation of these photons into masses, temperatures, magnetic fields, etc., 
uh, the, the number of assumptions is even bigger. So be humble, my friend, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris Carlos. So, questions? Jose Carlos, thank you very much for this great introduction to the black art of public <laughs> I assume that the detector that you're using is, uh, is a type of uh, CCD or CMOS, but actually the, the well is fit by electrons, no photo. Sure. Okay. Sure. Right. So, we have uh, recently been using a, a single photon detector uh, to measure some uh, computational metrics from other uh, uh, sources. And we get the, uh, we use a time resolution of one microsecond, so we can actually count single photons. Mm -hmm. uh, how, and actually, uh, I guess we can do a uh, similar uh, count single photons. Uh, spread over all the wavelength rays and all the spatial directions and all the polarimetry uh, values. And uh, can you do that with single photons and then add that to the exposure time that you like or to the resolution that you like? Uh, this, this type of detectors is, uh, are not included in this analysis. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, the first the first uh, thought uh, comes to, that comes to my mind is that. Uh, for for measuring one polarized photon out of ten thousand or of hundred thousand as as for the sun, uh, you would need to to be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting <clears throat> quite a quite a lot of uh, of microseconds time of your detector uh, etc. But in but but the, uh, I think. All the reasonings are it should be the same. Should be exactly the same. Uh, you are counting single photons, but uh, I, I don't know uh, which kind of noises you are risking at, and you certainly have to to go and carefully analyze which is the noise associated to your detection. Okay, <clears throat> the only. Questions. When you uh, mentioned the the uh, the compromise of the uh, pitch, the, the pixel pitch, um, what happens when when you open it the uh, wider and you get the photon coming from the side? Is it, is it the same behavior of photons coming from a larger angle or from vertical to the pixel? Uh -huh. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, something which can can also have an effect. Okay, uh, I'm not an expert on on, on detectors. Okay, uh, but certainly certainly uh, there are maybe maybe dependencies not only in in angle of incidence but also in polarization. Okay, indeed in we indeed we this is. And this is all, uh, always taken care of in our measurements, and we always illuminate detectors with the same polarization. Okay, not to get rid of, of these foolish effects, but uh, <clears throat> uh, these uh, variations with the with the angle uh, uh, do not only affect the detector itself; it don't, uh, they they also affect the the filtergram. Uh, uh, in the, in the thesis of uh, Fran, uh, uh, we have been analyzing, uh, analyzing uh, many other, but in particular, the, these effects of the angle of acceptance in, uh, in, the, in the instrument. So you not only uh, uh, reduce your spatial resolution, but can introduce spurious effects. This is very true. Question in the room or in Zoom. If anyone at the Zoom want to ask a question to Jose Carlos. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you invested the exposure time, you said that uh, you were going to reach a compromise so that the sun is the same within the exposure. Could you elaborate on the philosophy? Uh, yeah. This is this is uh, our daily problem. So I, I can I can go I, I can go to 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 an example. So uh, today we are we are finishing the the commissioning of uh, of two magnets keep instruments. Uh, which uh, will have first light tomorrow, tomorrow in Kiruna, Sweden, before launch. That hopefully this time uh, will take place uh, uh, in, by early January. Okay. Uh, uh, Tumac, Tumac is based on a filter graph so that we have to tune across the spectral line in several wavelengths and and uh, and take uh, four measurements in order to to drive the the first dose parameters. Then <clears throat> it takes time. It takes time. So our design is for Tuma to observe two such spectral lines uh, similar to the ones I I shown you. <clears throat> it, uh, at nine minimum wavelengths each in less than a minute. But we know, we know that in that minute, somehow has a period. So the, the first wavelength is taken uh, 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 when the sun is different from the last wavelength. And we have to survive with this. Uh, which kind of... Uh, uh, trade-off we do, we say, well, <clears throat> if the typical, the typical variations, the typical variations in, 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 in spatial variations of the sun are related to uh, motions of X kilometers per second, typically two kilometers per second, okay? And my pixel takes, um, I don't know how many kilometers of the sun, then the typical time, time scale associated to that, to that uh, vari typical variation is that. Then by doing this, by selecting one minute for the total time of my measurement, I'm throwing out any faster phenomena. So I'm averaging everything which is below my my observation time scale however however if i was clever enough uh, i can take care of those important phenomena taking place slower than my, my time but this is the only uh, thing we can do i'm sorry i have to say this <laughs> with my last uh, now just about what you just mentioned you you mentioned at the beginning that either you scan in wavelength mm -hmm. or you, you scan long sleep type and scan uh, yes. special. Yeah. Now, in, in, in nighttime astronomy, there's been now like two decades at least that we reach, uh, 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 we're using a different technique, we, we get everything at once. I have, I have fuse. Uh, I have fuse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have fuse. I have fuse are, are not jet. Uh, uh, used in in uh, spaceborne or aerospace borne uh, solar physics physics, and it's only started in ground based uh, solar solar physics. Uh, now the the uh, the best uh, also twenty G or something like that. They started in Hawaii. But uh, so far, correct me, David, if I'm wrong. But uh, so far, the the, the most uh, uh, performant ones are those made in in the ISC uh, uh, for the uh, European Solar Telescope. Okay, so there are plans to to include this, but uh, the challenges are 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 bigger. Okay. <clears throat> But this is a question of the of the field view that 
This, this is a, a question of the field view. This is a question of a spectral resolution, which we need. We need a huge spectral resolution as compared to yours. Uh, this is uh, also a matter of polarization, which has uh, also also a, 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 a role in, in, in there. And uh, well, in, in the end, so. Imagine, Im uh, 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 I have been uh, I've been saying that uh, uh, we are uh, we are making uh, observations which are photon star. Then why don't you go to big telescopes as for as for night time? Because the technological challenges are much higher. Uh, 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 we are photon star because because we are. Uh, looking at the very small details. We are uh, uh, having resolutions of a few million instruments. Uh, we have uh, uh, a special resolution of a few tens of an arc second. And, and then uh, this, uh, this obliged to, to have, uh, uh, obliged to get rid of 99.99% of the energy which is concentrated by, by the primary neuron. And this is uh, technologically unfeasible right now. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, our analysis is much more detailed. And then there are developments that lag behind the nighttime, nighttime uh, developments. On the other hand, the knowledge uh, we acquire in solar physics is of much application. For for not having a stone as well. More questions. Anyone from Zoom? Okay. No. Thank you again, Mr. Carlos.